this section, we're going to look at a T-hinge. I have already created a book mount and we've already looked at how to create a book mount, joining the mount to the undermount using gummed tape. And we're joining it on the longest side for strength and we're joining it on the left hand side. But we've done all of that and now we're ready to include our image or artwork. So assuming that everything is clean, your hands are clean and the environment is clean, you can introduce your artwork to the book mount. Now I first need to position that artwork carefully. And I try as much as possible not to touch the art itself, especially if it's a photograph or indeed anything like a charcoal, charcoal or um, anything where there might be little things that move around. But for all of them, keep your hands off the artwork as much as possible and you can just adjust it on the sides. Now what I'm looking at is this has a fine line of white around the outside to ensure that the picture is in fact centralised and it looks fine. I also really like to use a little um, ruler. The, the little ruler is helpful just to check that I am in fact lined up accurately all the way around. Once I'm satisfied that the artwork is um, positioned centrally and that there are no blemishes on the mount board, I can now sometimes use a little pencil just to mark these corners. And I'm particularly going to do it because I want to show you how I attach the uh, gummed tape to the artwork. So what I've done is just taken a pencil and just gone around the corners to position it because I want that to stay in its position. Sometimes um, I might use a glass weight. It's really nice to use a glass paper weight. They stay clean. You can certainly clean the glass beautifully so no glue or anything gets onto that and place that on the art if you think it might move while you're putting your tapes on. I'm going to lift mine to show you but I have here two pieces of gum tape, two longer pieces that are cut with a pair of scissors and two pieces of gum tape that are torn along the edge. Now if I take one of these long pieces and show you that if you put your tape, I'm going to put it on the surface of the picture just to show you, it's all dry. If I put the tape underneath all the way down into the image like that and then um, taped it all up, you may see the shadow of that tape shining through from underneath. Indeed, if you over wet it, you will definitely see it shining through. So there are a number of reasons we don't want a long piece of tape onto the artwork underneath the artwork. What we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny piece of tape with a torn edge and introduce it underneath the artwork, but only by five millimeters. Now the five millimeters is key in lots of reasons. The five millimeters is the minimum that you're allowing to go underneath the artwork. So if I went underneath the artwork, underneath the mount, so if I had my tape underneath my artwork by five millimeters, it should be hidden by the mount board. So what you really don't want is a long piece of tape coming down underneath all the way through. The other reason is if I if I want to undo this, I've only intruded onto the artwork by a small amount. So the, that's the main reason. I really don't want to have a lot of tape onto the artwork. Now I'm going to dampen just that corner, just that little edge, and I'm putting it underneath the artwork by about five millimeters. So what we're looking at is between the top of the artwork and the bottom of the tape is no, no more than five millimeters. And if I close the mount board, that should be hidden from sight. Um, so it's so really two reasons that you're doing that. You don't need to intrude onto the artwork. Sometimes I find that people overwet the paper. And if you're overwetting that paper and um, then sticking it underneath. It can be that it'll, it'll show through and you definitely don't want that. So now I've got two little pieces. I'm just gonna lift them and show you again. Gummed side, 
onto the artwork and gum side facing up but this is dry because i haven't wet that part i've only wet the little piece that is in in touch with the the um the art itself now i've only put two pieces on um some people say you should come in by the uh, width of the tape so i haven't quite done that i could have come a little further but i only need two pieces here and now i'm going to take the longer piece and wet that and I'm going to cover over the tape without touching the artwork. Same again for the other piece. I just have my little um, roller that I that I've wet the tape with on the side here. And there's the other piece of my T-hinge. Now what you're trying to do is bring this tape as close to the artwork as you can get. But leaving a gap so that should you want to separate the two, you can cut the tape away there and your artwork would come away without any problem. I'm just going to roll that over. There are the two little T uh, pieces onto the back. And it is now ready for completion. It is not a good idea to leave any pencil marks on the artwork itself. So we can erase those. It wasn't on the artwork, next to the artwork. So I'm just going to erase those. And I don't want any um, of those pencil marks there, particularly if I was working at conservation level. Now I don't, as a rule, use a pencil around, but it's always useful when I'm starting um, teaching people who are starting out to show where the picture lies so that you don't have to readjust it each time and ensure that it is indeed in place. So there we are all set to go, ready to finish the framing.